Hello everyone and welcome to another Let's Play of The Crown and the Flame Book 3, um, Chapter 7. If it seems like I'm posting all, all of these in a rush after months of not posting anything, I am actually, but partly it's because I'm self-conscious that we've been doing this game for so long and I haven't done any other games and what about the people who don't care about The Crown and the Flame? Oh no! Um, so I thought, let's try to speed through and finish this. Um, so today is chapter 7 of 17. So not quite halfway there, but we're getting there. Val, Raiden, and Arryn flee from the Iron Empire, but someone's allegiances aren't where they seem. Uh, that's kind of ominous. <laughs> um, so, okay, so I was wrong. I thought we were going to have a um, Dom chapter, and it, it looks like we're not. We're going to go straight to fleeing Fedoria. So, oh, I hope it's not Arryn that's... Allegiances aren't what they seem. I like Oren. The betrayal. That's that's a very ominous. I don't like that. Now playing is Val. <clears throat> with your friends imprisoned and all of Enon crawling with Iron Empire soldiers, you hide behind a hedge in the royal gardens. Hells, Val, you know what you should do. Nearby, a squad of soldiers drags your airship across the courtyard. You should jump back on that airship, fly out here, recruit some unsavory characters to join your band of sky pirates, then live out the rest of your days busting heads, drinking ale, and drinking more ale. But that's not what you're gonna do, is it? You duck behind a tall bush as a troop of soldiers walk by. No, you're going to do something stupid. As the soldiers pass, you scoop up a handful of pebbles. Ah, which one of these brainwashed idiots has the least embarrassing helmet? You throw the pebbles at... I get to pick someone! <laughs> okay, so our options are funny little horn guy, funny little wings guy sort of robot guy, weird asymmetrical guy, and sleek guy. So, well, they have names. Pointy, Birdface, that other guy, Mr. Fancy, and Grumpy. We're going with Grumpy. The pebbles clink off the soldier's armor. Huh? The soldier breaks off from the group to investigate. Ducking down, you hear boots closing on your hiding place, and you attack. As the soldier steps behind the bush, you strike. Gotcha! You wrap your arms tightly around the soldier's neck and squeeze. A second later, the soldier slumps down, unconscious. All I know is Raiden better be extra grateful after I free him, considering what I'm about to do. A moment later, you emerge from the hedge, wearing the armor of the fallen Iron Empire soldier. Heh, <laughs> I look like a real mean bastard in this helmet. You march purposely toward the palace, where Raiden, Orin, and the others are imprisoned. Just as you reach the palace doors... Wait one moment. Why are you going into the palace, soldier? Did she who shines brightest not wish us to clear the courtyard? How about you mind your own business? Excuse me? Uh, I mean... A thousand apologies. I spoke without thinking. You are forgiven, of course. My question remains, if we've been ordered to clear the courtyard, why are you going into the palace? I'm going into the palace because the Empress ordered me to. Truly, you received an order directly from the most illustrious Empress Azura? The Guiding Hand, the Great... Gods, please stop. Yes, I did. I got the order straight from her. From she who shines brightest. Oh, what an honor to be given orders directly. Yeah, you should have been there. I was so honored I nearly fainted. 
the soldier takes a step closer, sizing you up. After a pause, you may continue with your mission for our most radiant empress. Yeah, yeah, for every life a purpose. The soldier leaves you alone and you slip through the practice palace doors. You step into the dungeon where two guards stand watch over your friends. Why can't there ever just be one guard? Glorious day, soldier. All right, glorious day. What brings you to the dungeon? New orders for you from the Empress herself. New orders? Her radiance has blessed us. Please tell us our new purpose. I should persuade them. The Empress herself wants you to clear the courtyard. The guard turns to the other guard. Come, friend, let us clear the courtyard. She who shines brightest demands it. Okay, it's kind of creepy just how brainwashed everyone is. The guards hand over the keys eagerly rushing past you and out the dungeon. I can't believe that worked. You start unlocking the cell, muttering as you do it. Your friends come up to the bars. Well, I must say, I don't think white is your color. You know, I could just leave you in there. He didn't mean it, Val. We've never been more grateful. That's more like it. The lock clicks and the cell door swings open. Some of your people are locked up in the other cells. I'll get them next, if I have enough time. Thanks to your craftiness, you have plenty of time to free all of your fellow soldiers. Excellent. I'll sing songs of you. Many thanks, Val. Your efforts won't go unrewarded. We owe you our lives. How about just a drink when we get out of this? Because right now, we've got to move. And I can't see a damn thing in his helmet. You quickly shed the Iron Emperor armor as you hear the sound of boots thundering in the corridor above. Sounds like that way is blocked. Come on, I think I saw a back door over here. Everyone starts running toward the back of the dungeon, but Raiden hesitates by the door. Raiden, come on! Val, what happens if we run? Azura will never stop hounding us until we are dead or kneeling at her feet. We may want to consider other options. What other option is there? Stay in prison until she who craps lightning decides to fry us for breakfast? Admittedly, all our options at this point seem bad, but... Hearing boots on the stairs, you unhook your flail from your belt. Raiden, I just risked my life to save you. If you don't shut up and start moving, I will bury this flail in your head. There's that gentle Valentina touch. You follow Raiden out the back door, just as the Iron Empire soldiers begin pouring into the dungeon. After rushing through the castle's back corners, you burst into the library with a squad of Iron Empire soldiers right at your back. For the Empress! The soldier behind you swings his sword, and you feel the blade whip through your hair. Too close! Val, split up. We'll divide and conquer. On it! You split off, your fellow soldiers running just ahead of you. Several enemies break off their formation in pursuit. Get the angry one! I'll show you angry! As the nearest one pursues you, you slide under a table and pop up on the other side. You're mine. He takes another cut at you with his sword. I should flip the table. You flip the table, and the soldier's sword wedges into it. As he tries to free his sword, you smash your flail into his helmet. Stay a while. You might learn something. You quickly turn and race up the spiral staircase. Halt in the Empress's name. I should climb. You leap up the stairs, twisting upwards. I should climb. <laughs> you keep rising, bounding up the stairs two at a time. I should climb. 
With a final burst of effort, you reach the top of the staircase. Turning, you smash your flail down into the face of the pursuing soldier. Too slow, pal. Stormholt soldiers hurry up the staircase, fleeing the Iron Empire troops below. What do we do? There are too many. Surveying the area, your eyes land on an enormous bookcase nearby. Quick, help me push it over. Push. You and your fellow soldiers push hard against the bookcase. Why are there so many books? Push this thing over and there'll be ale for all. You heard the lady. Push. With a final heave, you manage to topple the bookcase. Oh! It slams down on the enemy soldiers, burying them beneath a mountain of books. Guess they'll be doing some heavy reading. Now come on, soldiers. Knowing Raiden, he probably needs my help again. You descend the stairs, rounding the final bend to see Raiden and Tevin dispatching the last of the soldiers. Val! I thought for sure you were dead. I'm glad I was wrong. That makes two of us. Three, if you're counting me. Although, I suppose we're still just acquaintances. Now that I think about it, that might have been too forward of me, what I meant. Relax, new girl. Less talking, more running. Running seems a splendid idea. Listen. Behind you, you hear the sounds of a second wave of soldiers rushing toward the library. Glory for the Empress. The guiding hand leads us to light. As you rush toward the palace doors, you catch sight of a bunch of Fedorian troops hiding in one of the aisles. What the? Aren't those the soldiers you trained? Yeah, but they sure aren't acting like it. Please be quiet, Miss Val. You'll spoil our position. Are those purple ninnies just going to stay there until they're caught? Now's your chance to rally the Fedorian troops. <laughs> Let's spend diamonds. You storm over to the Fedorian's hiding place. What are you doing? I didn't train you to wield those swords just so you could cower behind them. But we've hardly had any training at all. Some of us have never even held a sword until this morning. Val, well, they might have a point. Our enemies are nearing quite rapidly. I'm afraid Fedorians aren't known for their fighting prowess. Well, they're about to get known. It's one thing to hide when you're unable to defend yourselves. That I can understand. But it's pretty damn pathetic when I know for a fact you can defeat these numbskulls. Some of the Fedorians rise to their feet. She's right. We can do this. I just said that. Now get up and show some courage. A few more Fedorians rise as the Iron Empire soldiers close in. Milady mercenary, I'm all for courage and a good rally. However, we've been trained for a few hours. These rapidly approaching and rather ferocious enemies have trained their entire lives. What chance have we? You release the head of your flail, letting it dangle ominously at your feet. I should encourage them. You'll have every chance, because I'll be fighting alongside you. The rest of the Fedorians rise, cheering, and get into formation beside you. Foul! 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 The Iron Empire soldiers charge forward, nearly upon you. Remember your training, and you'll soon know glory. For Azura. For Val. Attack! The two forces meet in the center of the library in a clash of armor and steel. Take that, you brutes. For Fedoria. You meet an enemy head on. Rawr. I should bash her face in. You bash her in the helmet with your flail. <laughs> Turning, you see a Fedorian stab an Iron Empire soldier through the neck with a rapier. Consider yourself vanquished, fiend. You duck as another enemy swings at you. Hey! The 
before you can counterattack. A Fedorian hits him with a mace, dropping him instantly. Ha ha! Did you observe that, milady? Oh yeah, I observed it. Soon the Iron Empire soldiers are being pushed back. Correct. It is now time for you to turn tail, you feckless barbarians. A Fedorian bounds up to you. We are proving victorious, all thanks to you, Milady Val. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Psst, we're forever in your debt. Should we come out of this skirmish alive, we'll do all that we can to repay it. Now I must be off, until we meet again. She runs off headlong into battle. For Val, for Fedoria. Maybe these Fedorians aren't so bad. Raiden snaps you out of the moment. If escape is the goal, you'd best be on your way. You're right. Out the palace doors, quick! You slam through the palace doors. The airship's there, at the far end of the courtyard. You run down the steps and out across the hedge garden, where Joran leaps out, seizing Urin. Aha! Ah! Unhand my sister at once, or taste steel. Joran steps back, his spear tip hovering against Orin's throat. The palace doors open behind him, and Azura emerges, followed by a host of servants and soldiers. Ah, I was wondering where our mercenary friend had gotten to. It would appear we've foiled quite the daring escape. Nothing's foiled yet, Empress. Stubborn to the last. You're surrounded, Valentina. As I see it, you have two choices. You can leave behind Arin, Amoth, and flee, postponing your unpleasant demise for a short while. But my wrath will find you in time. Or... Or... I should... Insult her vowel style. How about I rush over there, faster than any of your mind-controlled minions can react, then bury my flail six inches into your snowy white cranium? You dare threaten Shihu. Oh, and then strangle Baldi with his own guts. How does that sound? That is not the second choice I had in mind. Instead, why don't you get down on your knees and pledge your loyalty to me. I like my idea better. You eye Joran, whose attention is divided between restraining Arin and listening to the Empress. Time to do something stupid again. Well, yeah. Rescue Arin. You are on Joran in a flash, slamming your fist into his nose. Huh. You have no idea how much I've been wanting to do that. You follow that up by jabbing him in the throat with your elbow. He releases his hold on Orin and you pull her free. Come on, new girl. You just... That was so fast. My gods. Compliment me in the airship. Let's go. Raiden, move. As you turn toward the airship, you expect to see Raiden ahead of you, sprinting up the ramp. But instead, he's blocking your path, a crossbow aimed at your heart. Raiden, what the hells are you doing, and why shouldn't I kill you for it? I'm succumbing to reason. We cannot win, Valentina. Not against her. No way! The Raiden I know wouldn't just give up. Not after everything. The Raiden I know would fight. For a split second, for the first time you could remember, Raiden looks unsure. Then I am not who you thought I was. You son of a... You leap forward and Raiden fires. The arrow pierces through your chest, just above your heart. What the hell? She's right, this is really out of character for Raiden. Howling with rage and pain, you keep charging. You knock the crossbow out of Raiden's hands and... knock him down? 
You barrel into Raiden with your shoulder, knocking him off his feet. Raiden stumbles, falling to the cobblestones. You stand over him, gripping the handle of your flail. You! If I ever see you again, I'll kill you, traitor. Tevin grabs your arm, pulling you toward the airship. Hurry, Val. Empress, guiding light, they are getting away. Let them go. My rule is inevitable, and we must save our strength. Besides, her gaze settles on Raiden. We have all we need. Okay, so I have to assume that he did this on purpose to gain her trust and assassinate her or something? Like, Raiden would not just... Raiden wouldn't... I don't know. With that, you and Auron climb into the airship, and it quickly glides into the air. Are you alright, Val? That wound looks quite bad. Come sit down, Val. You're going to need stitches. It's fine. Get away from me. As the airship rises, you look out the window and see Raiden staring up at you. A moment later, he turns to Azura and kneels before her. Raiden, of all the stupid, boneheaded things! You slump against the wall, slowly sliding down until you're sitting on the floor. I never thought you would do this. I... I have to assume he's doing this to try to give Kenna an advantage, but I don't know what it could be. You crushed your enemies with a giant bookcase. This was your most literary moment. You rallied the Fedorians and he did you proud. You rescued Auron. She'll prove to be an insightful, intelligent ally. Raiden betrayed you, pledging his loyalty to Azura. Can you trust anyone after this? So we're missing three more people, four more people. I don't know who they'll be. I'm assuming this last one is Davidius or whatever the Luther's son's long name was. Okay, so that was chapter seven, and um, we're we're moving along in a fast clip. So um, if you're enjoying these, I'm glad. If you're not, then we should be on to something else in in due time. And thank you for uh, thank you for being patient with me. I like to finish things when I can, so I'm going to try to finish this one. Um, once again, my name is Anna Mardal, and this has been The Crown and the Flame, and thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.